Good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and I want to thank the Lord for the sending of the Holy Spirit here this morning. I, the, uh, sometimes it feels so much clearer and better than in other times. Mm -hmm. I know the Holy Spirit is uh, working this morning, and I know He's here. And uh, we, we're thankful that we can be here. We're thankful that we have the opportunity to read some of God's word to you, and uh, uh, we pray that I know you will be attentive and uh, help you with it, and uh, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll be a help to you. So this morning we're going to study some in, in the book of Saint of Luke, uh, chapter 11, and uh, it's a it's lesson on uh, how to pray. So many times that we, as we pray, we we don't pray with uh, <clears throat> with a sincere heart. I might as well say it. I mean, we pray a lot of times through habit, uh, just because it's necessary to say something, uh, or things of this nature. But really and truly, the disciples asked Jesus here uh, to teach them to pray. And uh, he tells them very plainly in this, and he gives them an example of uh, how to pray. And sometimes, it, it, I, I know if you read it, sometimes it, it slides by you, and sometimes it's, it, it means more. Well, this week, I've been studying it, trying to, to teach it, or study to teach it, and uh, it just meant a whole lot more to me this, than it did uh, a lot of times. So we'll, we'll try to... Uh, uh, be a help this morning. In, in verse 1 of chapter 11, and it came to pass as they, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples, talking about John the Baptist. And he said unto them, When you pray, <clears throat> when you pray, Say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in the earth. Give us day by day our bread, and forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted unto us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Now there, notice here, he says when you pray, Hallowed be thy name. Precious be thy name. Uh, 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 I have something over here I wanted to see. Hallowed be the, hallowed to make, is to, conse to consecrate, to sanctify, to reverence, to honor, and, and as, because it's sacred. And so they, he said here, when you pray, you pray to God the Father, and you praise his holy name, and first of all, you pray that his kingdom come. And then, thy will be done. And then, give us day by day our daily bread. Give us the food that we eat. And forgive us of our sins. And so these are some of the things that is important to God. These are important to Jesus because he told them, this is some of the things that you ask for. Now notice. And he said, and to them, which of you, and here's an example, and, and, and which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. Now, he is, he is using an example of the three loaves as the man that's going to God and praying and asking forgiveness of his sins. He's using this as an example and, the, and he says here, and the, and the friend's going to come to his friend and ask for three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Now, again, put yourself in, in front of Jesus or in front of God, and as you're praying, you have nothing to offer Right. You, do, you have nothing to offer the Lord. You have nothing to offer to him. But you're asking. You're asking to give me these foods. Give me uh, 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 the, 
our daily bread and, I, and, and forgive me of my sins. And he's asking this friend of his for three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has come in his journey, has come to me, and I have nothing set for him. In verse 7, and he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. Now, does that sound like the Lord Jesus Christ? Does that sound like God? No. No, it don't. But now listen, here's the thing. He's, he's using this as an example, and when we pray, we need to understand this. We don't just uh, mutter a few words, and, and he grabs it just like a hungry dog and says, oh, I'm so glad that you're doing it. But he, he's saying, hey, and, and he's using this man, and, and, and he's in the bed with his children, and he's, a, and he's, he's done laid in for the night, notice. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I just can't. Uh, and 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 here's here's the thing: we need to put our 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 ourselves in this position and saying, well, what if he says this to me? What if what if I pray and ask God to forgive me of my sins or to uh, answer a prayer of mine? He said, no, ain't gonna do it. Ain't gonna do it. Well, you're talking about two fleshly bodies here. But now, God is, uh, Jesus is using this as an example, and he's saying, if, if when you pray, you, you're going to have to do something besides just come there and haphazardly ask me for something or, or just mumble around and not be sincere about it. Now, notice, in verse 8, I say unto you, here's what Jesus said unto them about these two, this conversation here. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend. And we know this morning that Jesus is closer than a brother. He's a friend to us. But notice here, he says here, and I say unto you, uh, 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 in verse 8, and though he will not rise and give him, because he is a friend, Yet, because of his impotent impotuity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Now, here's what the thing of it is. The whole, the whole thing in this. First of all, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you're praying, you need to have a sincere heart. Amen. You need to be. You need to be in the right frame of mind. You need to have a desire to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to get all the world out of your system, out of your out of your mind. And when you're talking to the Lord and when you're praying to Him, you recognize Him as your as your Savior and as your Father. And you you need to be sincere with Him. Amen. Because here He says, "You come to Him in this frame of mind, and listen, He's going to give you what you're asking for." Now, it may not be when you want it or what you want it, but notice he says, he will rise and give him as many loaves as he needs. In other words, this word, infertility, means trouble. You need to trouble the Lord. And I heard, I heard a man one time, a long time ago, he made this statement. He says, now, if I'm, if I'm take, teaching you something wrong and, and you, you know it, you trouble the Lord about it. You tell him on you tell him on me, and tell him that I'm doing this wrong. And it's the same thing here when you're praying to the Lord Jesus Christ, or when you're praying to God. Listen, you need to get God's attention. Amen. Yeah. You need to get His attention because you need to be sincere with Him. Now, over in over in the book of Matthew, notice I want you to turn over there if you would just a minute and turn to to uh, uh, chapter six. Chapter 6. And look at verse 5. <clears throat> and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, they're not asking for this reward that they're going to get, but they have their reward. And listen, when, when we do these things, uh, 
And listen, I'm, 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 I'm telling on myself haphazardly when we just go through a pretense and we just uh, mutter out some words and we're not sincere with God, listen, he don't like it. Right. And, and it's the same way here with the hypocrites. He says when they, when they pray, when they pray, they're, they're hypocrites and they, they love to pray to get the, uh, uh, the praise of men. And, and, you know, I've heard a lot of times, boy, he sure did pray a good prayer. Well, listen, huh, listen, I'm not there to hear a good prayer because that's for God's ear. Right. Well, listen, uh, that's, that's a lot of people, uh, they, they, they call on so-and-so and, oh, -and -so and, he, he forever prayed, he prayed 15 minutes. Hmm. Well, listen, a lot of the time, it's like this, this, this man here as being a hypocrite. They pray to get the attention of the people. Right. They pray to get the pats on the back. They pray not knowing half of what they're asking for, not what they're saying. They don't, they don't have no intentions of, uh, of really and truly getting God's attention. And some of them do. But listen, for those that, uh, us this morning, we need to be aware of this thing because... Amen. God wants, God wants us to come and pray to him. He wants us to trouble him. He wants us to continually, continually, and continually come before him. And if we ask for the same thing over and over and over and over again, listen, it does not bother God because he wants us to uh, be like his children. Amen. Listen, you see, a, you, you, you see a woman or a man leading a little, a little child and he goes by the counter, and there's a, there's candy and stuff there. Ah, and he starts just to, trying to reach over and get it. And he's and he's twisting. I want it. I want it. I want it. And he starts crying and wanting. And the daddy's just dragging him on. You know, listen, that's the way we are sometimes. Mm -hmm. We when we come to God and crying out, He knows what we need. Amen. And, and the biggest majority of the time, it's not candy because listen. Uh, candy is not good for men. It's not good for the children. But listen, he knows when he when they get down there somewhere else where the, the daddy can get him what he wants, he needs that. And so when we ask for something, we need to make sure what we need. Amen. And uh, this morning, it's a it's a it's something that we need to really really uh, concentrate on because we we do it. I know. I hope we all do. But the thing of it is. A lot of times are we really in tune with God? Because sometimes it takes a while to get in tune with God. Right. Uh, and every time we say, for all, he don't jump. Amen. And so this morning, we want to read a little bit more here now. Notice, in verse 6 of this, uh, Matthew 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Amen. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And so, again, we see the flesh, the flesh wanting praise mm -hmm. for the words that comes out of its mouth. And so the flesh will praise the flesh, and you know they'll recognize uh, when a man is out there praying and he's speaking these big words, and when he's he's speaking out loud, and when he's talking and all this. But now, what does it say here? But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And this this thing here is a closet. Was when they prayed, the Jew prayed, they had their their. Uh, their hood and all and they would put it over them and they would pray and this is the same way here when you pray you don't pray for people to see you or to hear you or to praise you or anything like this you pray in secret and Amen. so many times it's a, a whole lot better when uh, uh, when you pray just to pray silently and to not make any noise because God can hear you Amen. God's got that because listen, it's coming from your spirit, not from your flesh. When you can, when that prayer comes from your spirit, mm -hmm. and you and you can connect with the Lord Jesus Christ and with God, listen. That's when He really hears it. 
But now this old flesh is proud. This old flesh saying, well, I'm going to pray today and I'm going to pray that God's going to send me a, a wheelbarrow full of money. Listen, that's what the flesh wants. Amen. And listen, God knows what the flesh needs. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, this is some of the things that I've I seen in this here. Uh, here, and he said here, notice in verse 8. Uh, but be not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. So now, if he knows before you ask, you say, well, what's the reason for me asking? Well, listen, I knew when my children needed clothes because a lot of times they, they started wearing thin. And my, the shoes on their feet, they get bare and they, they start wearing. I knew when they did, but now a lot of times they did, they did, and they didn't have to ask me because, listen, I could see it. No, and God, God sees you, and He sees the life that you're in, and He knows, He knows what you need. Amen. He knows what you need before you get up in the morning, and before you bow your head and, and thank Him for your breakfast, or before you get out of bed and you ask Him to bless this day and and to take care of you. He knows what you need. Amen. But listen. He wants you to ask him. He wants to hear from you because, listen, that's the goal between between you and God. And, and it's the same way with your children. Uh, your children, when they ask you for things, they ask you because they know that you can get it for them. But you can't, but they can't get it for themselves. And so that's the reason why that your children ask you for things. And that's the reason why that we need to ask God for the things that we need because so many times, when I ask for something like that, I have not got no way to get it. And so th this is this is this is what I, I want. To, I want to show you something this morning, and concerning prayer. If you would turn to Ecclesiastes, just a minute. We want to read just a little bit there in Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse one. Ecclesiastes five, verse one. It says, verse 1, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Amen. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter things anything God and be ha and, and be not rash with thy mouth and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God for God is in heaven and thou upon the earth therefore let thy words be few Amen. for a dream cometh through a mul the multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words now, in this, I, 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 I gather that God is not in, interested in the amount of words that you say. According to uh, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, what uh, Solomon wrote, and, and he's not interested in the amount of words, but he's interested in the, the uh, probably the choice of words that you use and probably the spirit that you have when you speak in these words. So he says uh, 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 in verse 3, For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, and here is something that's very important. When we, when we have a serious problem in our life and say, God, if you'll take care of this, if you if you if you help my wife, my husband, my loved ones, I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll do this and I'll never do this. Listen, be careful. Mm -hmm. Be careful uh, because listen, when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for He hath no pleasure in fools. Amen. Pay a fool. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is better is it that thou should shouldest not vow 
that thou shouldst vow and not pay. Amen. And so remember these things this morning when we're praying, we're praying to a loving Father. And he understands all things. But be careful how that you let this mouth or this flesh uh, get you in trouble. Because, listen, it can, it can solve a problem and get you in trouble at the same time. Yeah. God will answer. God can answer that prayer. But that vow, will, it needs to be paid. Amen. When you promise God, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, you be careful. Because a lot of times, the thing that you're promising him is because the old flesh is hurting because of the of a, uh, something that's went on. But listen, a lot of times you can't keep that vow. And so be careful when you pray a prayer because uh, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's better to say, Father, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And so here again in verse 6, Suffer not thou, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, Neither say there before the angels that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words there are also different vanities, but fear thou God. And so this morning when, we, when we're praying to God, we have a loving Father, and, and he loves us. Amen. He cares for us, and he's listening to us. But listen, be careful how you, how you talk to me, because he don't want to hear this flesh. He wants to hear from this spirit. Amen. And this flesh, this flesh is bold because it's, it's sinful. It's full of sin. And it'll say anything, get what it wants. And then it'll suffer the consequences later. But the thing of it is, we don't need to do it that way. We need to go. We need to go about it in a way that's pleasing to God. And when we pray to God, we need to be sincere with Him. And 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 that's that is uh, that's what I, I want to do. Now let's get back over in our uh, first part of Luke here and and see this this thing again here. Notice in uh, in in Luke 11. Now back in Luke 11, here he says. In verse 10, I'm going to read this to you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Amen. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give for a fish give him a serpent? And this is this is you know that your your father, your mother, your daddy, your they they won't give you something that will hurt you, and it's the same way with God. God is not going to give you everything that you ask for, right? Because listen, He knows what the end results of of, of some of the things that you that you think that you need will wind up. And listen, the most of the time, worldly possessions will will get you in trouble. Uh, and, and God will give them to you when he sees me. And uh, people, it's, it's, you, you, you have to be real, you have to be real, real close and, and, at, and what you ask for with God because he, like I said, and the Bible says, he already knows what you need. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, when you pray, pray our Father which art in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. And praise him and uh, 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 look to him as the one that knows all these things and will take care of, the, uh, of your need. And look to him as a, as a, as a father and as not a, uh, a gift bag because he's, he's, he knows what you need. And so he says here in verse 12, or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? And then in, uh, in 15, uh, 13, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Amen. And so this morning, like I said, if if you know how to treat your children, and you have children, and you know how to treat them, then think about your heavenly Father, how how He knows how to treat you, because. It's the same. He used it as an example here. 
And when you love your children, and uh, a lot of times you have to uh, take them by the arm and spank them, or you have to uh, uh, correct them in their things. But listen, God does that to you and to me for our own good and to show Amen. you, listen, he loves you. Because as it's been told time and time again, if he doesn't, if he doesn't tell you these things, if he doesn't chastise you, then you're not his. Right. And so remember when when God when God chastises you, or when he when he through the Holy Spirit rebukes you, hey, he's doing it because he loves you, not because that that he hates you, but because he loves you. Mm -hmm. And listen, uh, uh, all 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 things you can do is humble yourself before him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, that's. That's that's what he wants. You can't say, well, I'm going to give you fifty dollars more in a collection plate. Uh, he he don't need your money. Amen. He don't, he don't he don't need for you to to uh, do anything for him. But listen, all you have to do is you just ask him to forgive you, and and that's the solution to anybody anybody's pro, uh, problem is just humbling ourselves before the Lord and asking forgiveness. Amen. And uh, and when you pray, remember these words that. Uh, that Luke wrote here, and uh, humble yourself before the Lord, and uh, and pray, Thy will be done, because that way, then then God can, uh, he, can he can bless you, and uh, uh, everything will be much 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 sweeter between you and God. Amen. So this is our lesson. We thank you for listening to us, and pray for us. Amen.